Yo, what's up guys? This is Theo here. Welcome back to part 36 of Introduction to C++ Programming. So we are on recursion. Okay. So a uh, recursive function in C++ is a function that calls itself. Uh, so we're going to look at what that means. And to avoid having the recursion run indefinitely, you need to have a break case or a termination condition. So the idea of the recursion is what? Basically, it's a function that calls itself. Awesome. So uh, to demonstrate recursion, Let's create a program to calculate a numbers factorial. So a numbers factorial is basically the number multiplied by uh, the number itself all the way down to 1. So it uh, refers to the product of all positive integers that are less than or equal to a specific non-number, non-negative integer. So we have 4 factorial. That's going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Awesome. So what is the factorial of 5? Okay, so the factorial of 5 is going to be equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Awesome. Uh, let's define our function. So here we have a, a function called factorial, which takes an integer and it says if the integer that they pass us is 1, let's just return 1 because 1 is going to be a factorial of itself or it's going to return 1. Otherwise, we're going to return n. So say they have 2, right? Okay. So if it's 2, it's going to be return 2 times the factorial of 2 minus 1. Okay. So now it's going to call this with 2 minus 1, 1. And now it's going to say n equals 1, return 1. So now it's going to say 2 times 1 and 2. So it's going to return 2 as well. So uh, it's easy to see this on a piece of paper, but I'm just trying to break it down for you. So the if statement defines the exit condition. In this case, it's when n equals 1, return 1. The factor of 1 is 1. Replace the recursive function call in the else statement, which returns n multiplied by the factorial of n minus 1. For example, if you call the factorial function with the argument 4, it will execute as follows. Return 4 times factorial of 3, which is 4 times 3 times factorial of 2, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times factorial of 1, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you sort of see that stack trace going on. The factorial function calls itself and then continues to do so till the argument equals 1 or till it breaks out of that condition. Cool. So type in the code to define a recursive function calculating the factorial. So we're going to say if it's 1, let's go ahead and return 1. Otherwise, we're going to return x times factorial. Uh, so, so yeah, just fact of x minus 1. Awesome. So we're now at the point where we can call our factorial function. So we're going to print out 5, okay? And remember, this is going to return n of factorial time. This is going to return um, 5 times 4 times factorial of n minus 1. That's factorial of 3. This is going to eventually give us 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And another name for the exit condition is the base case. When are we going to actually break out of you know what we're trying to accomplish? Keep in mind that a base case is necessary for real recursion. Without it, the recursion will keep running forever. So at what point is our, you know, this loop, you know, this calling itself, this recursion, when is, when is it going to end? So a real recursive function should have, what, a base case. Awesome. All right, guys, that's it for part 36. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. So please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care.